The Great Lakes are both a national and an international treasure. They contain over 20% of the Earth's fresh surface water. They provide many, many needs for the 45 million people who live in the Great Lakes region, everything ranging from uh, fresh drinking water to energy creation. It also is very important from the perspective of the local economy. It generates $4 trillion worth of regional economic uh, drivers in this area. and so. Overall, I would say the Great Lakes really contribute to the, the quality of our lives. There are many people, entities, organizations that are invested in the Great Lakes and they need to be thinking about the impacts of lake levels on their investments. Whether that's the Nature Conservancy, whether that's the shipping industry, we all are invested in the lakes themselves and in the changes that happen to them over time as well as the coastal resources that can be impacted by those changes. Historically, Great Lakes water levels are dynamic. In other words, we have a natural range of variability in water levels uh, that has helped uh, maintain biodiversity uh, in the Great Lakes ecosystem. With the advent of climate change, we're not really sure how the variability in water levels will actually change in the future. So let's say, for example, you have somewhat lower water levels. That can adversely impact the fishery by actually affecting connectivity uh, of fish who need to move up the tributaries or into wetland complexes uh, to utilize spawning and nursery habitat. We track water levels and it impacts our ability to load our ships. It's critical. We need to have a sufficient underbody clearance um, for our vessels to navigate the narrow channels. Um, and as the channels become shallower, they also become narrower. So it increases the risk um, that the vessel captains have as they sail. Um, obviously, we have a tremendously uh, good safety record, and we want to keep it that way. We've learned over the last hundred years that we have to be very protective of our resources going forward. So any scientific collection of data with regards to the lake levels, lowering, raising, staying the same, as, as a guidepost for economic development, at the local community level or the manufacturing level will be critical for planners going forward. The Hazards Planning Research Center is specifically focused on the issues that planners have to deal with in really building safer communities that uh, are less vulnerable, more resilient in the face of uh, disaster losses of life and property. And we need to bring foresight into the thinking about where we build and how we build so that we can deal with climate-related changes in precipitation and extreme heat events and flooding that will allow those to be viable communities for our descendants. There are essentially three major what we call components of the, of the water budget that really drive the system, and those are evaporation off the surfaces of the lakes, precipitation directly onto the surface of the lakes, and then runoff entering the, the lakes that comes from precipitation on the land surfaces. And so those we really refer to as sort of a net basin supply or the net supply of water to the lakes. NOAA and other organizations are continuously doing research on how to better understand what's happening with regard to the water budget and water levels and how we can use that understanding to improve our projections. One role that we see the Nature Conservancy is providing in this whole issue of lake level change and how it affects both nature and people is that we are the ones that we see we can bring the tools to the application. Across the Great Lakes region, a variety of different organizations and agencies are developing tools and information for decision makers, planners, natural resource managers to be able to access the climate information that they need to help with decision making. Tools like the Great Lakes Water Level Dashboard that helps users look at um, past water level data as well as future projections across a user designated time scale. Tools like Climate Wizard, which helps users look at um, the climate change that we're experiencing now as well as future projections under different emission scenarios. The Association of State Floodplain Managers has developed the Great Lakes Coastal Resilience Planning Guide, which helps users look at different coastal hazards, how they're able to map and visualize the way that climate change can impact coastal systems. NOAA has, uh, hosts the Digital Coast, which is a collaboration of six partners around the Great Lakes region, and it's a portal for a variety of different geospatial data and tools and trainings that users can customize to the area that they're working on. 
The Climate Adaptation Collaboratory is being developed by the University of Notre Dame with help from the Nature Conservancy to have a virtual place for users to share and find climate change information, resources, case studies, tools to help them understand how climate is changing in the region. All of these tools help inform the climate adaptation process, which is designing, updating, implementing strategies that include climate considerations to make sure that we're making the best long-term investments in our resources.